Just as plants grow old and as people grow old, so spiritual movements grow old and over time change and God needs to bring renewal. So the story of Judges is cycles of decline among the children of Israel, getting further and further away from the Lord. So the Lord brings judgment upon them, typically handing them over to some enemy. And then they repent and call upon the Lord, and the Lord raises up a judge for them to deliver them. In the time of Joshua, there was a very great zeal for God, but after 400 years, that zeal had waned very severely. The priesthood was still operating at Shiloh. Eli, the judge of Israel, was priest and his sons were operating as priests, but they did not honour the Lord. They took advantage of their position. They demanded the best cuts of meat when people brought an offering to the Lord, and they slept with the women who gathered around. And so the Lord was not pleased. Eli had remonstrated with them, but he had not thrown them out of office. And so God had determined to take the priesthood away from the family of Eli and to raise up a new priest who would walk in his ways. But there were some godly people in the country. Hannah loved the Lord, but the Lord did not give her any children. And when her husband's other wife, who was bearing children, mocked her, she was in great distress and brought her concern to the Lord, promising that if the Lord gave her a son, she would give him back to the Lord all the days of his life. The Lord gave her a son, Samuel, and she gave him to the Lord, and the Lord began to speak to him, and he was established as a prophet to all Israel. But God had to take away the old priesthood, and he did that when he raised up the Philistines to judge the Israelites. The Israelites had a choice. They could call upon the Lord through the new prophet, Samuel, or they could go to the establishment the old priests and wicked priests, Hophni and Phinehas. They chose the latter and brought the Ark of the Covenant into the, into the uh, camp of soldiers, thinking that God would now protect them because he was with them. But God can protect his name without endorsing the evil of the people. He allows the Israelites to be severely defeated. He allows the Ark to be taken. Hophni and Phinehas, the priests, are killed and their father Eli dies when he hears the news. And they put the ark before Dagon, the god of the Philistines, and in the morning Dagon is flat on its face. They restore him to his pedestal, and the next morning he is flat on his face again, except his hands and his head have broken off before the ark of the covenant. But the Lord sends a humongous plague among the people. Many of them die. And they immediately think, this is because we have the Ark of the Covenant of God. And so they move the Ark to the next city, and the plague follows the Ark. And they move it to the next city, and the plague follows the Ark. Many thousands of Philistines are dying. They must return the Ark. But how can they know that it is the God of Israel who is judging them? And so they make a trespass offering, gold images of the tumours that were coming on them, and of the rats that were invading the land. Put the ark on a new cart, pulled by two cows who'd never pulled a cart, whose calves were taken from them. The cows returned the ark to the people of Beth Shemesh. The lords of the Philistines are satisfied they have dealt with the matter of the God of Israel and the ark of the covenant. But some of those at Beth Shemesh look into the ark. God judges them, and so they send the ark from Beth Shemesh to Kyrgyzstirim. Then the men of Kyrgyzstirim came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eliezer his son to keep the ark of the Lord. So it was that the ark remained in Kyrgyzstirim a long time. It was there twenty years and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtaroths from among you, and prepare your hearts for the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtaroths, 
and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water and poured it out before the Lord, and they fasted that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel. And the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day, and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more into the territory of Israel, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered its territory from the hand of the Philistines. Also there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went from year to year on a circuit to Bethel, Gilgal and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all these places. But he always returned to Ramah, for his home was there. There he judged Israel, and there he built an altar to the Lord. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share these verses from First Samuel chapter 7. It's interesting here that we have no mention of Shiloh, where the tabernacle was. What's happening there? Eli was dead. The priests were dead. The only priest that remained was Ichabod, who was born the day his father died, when the ark was taken. And so the children of Israel seem not to be having the benefit of the Day of Atonement sacrifice each year to restore them to the Lord. And they are in a very sad situation. But after 20 years, Samuel calls upon them to turn back to the Lord. Put away the Baals and the Asteros, all the images that you've set up. Just serve God only. Repentance is what is required in our lives, not God and some other gods as well. There is only one God who delivers. So Samuel calls the elders to gather the people, and they fast that day, and they acknowledge that they have sinned against the Lord, that they have not walked in God's way. Samuel judges them. That is, they come before him, delivers penalties for them to pay, that they might be forgiven before God. But when the Philistines hear that the Israelites have gathered together, they say, here's our opportunity to defeat them again and to overcome them. We are rulers over them. They bring their army against Samuel. Samuel hasn't organized the people to fight. In fact, he has promised the people that he would pray for them and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. The Israelites call out to the Lord, help us. Samuel offers the sacrifice, and he calls on the Lord, and the Lord sends thunder and lightning against the Philistines to disrupt their battle, and Israel wins the day. And so God grants peace between the Philistines and Israel during the time that Samuel is judge. The cycle is repeated again. Twenty years of departure from the Lord. Repentance before the Lord. And the Lord raising up a prophet, a judge, in this case Samuel, who delivers them from their enemies and there being peace during the time that Samuel judges the nation as the people walk again in the ways of the Lord. A new beginning.